everybody, welcome to the Proton Pack is not a toy. My name is Matt. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is not a toy. My name is Matt and this is episode 8 of the Venkman conversion where I'm taking my Proton Pack and changing up some of the details of it to make it look more like the Ghostbusters 2 version of the Venkman Hero Pack. Speaking of changes, I've decided to go back and make some alterations to some of the changes I've already made on my pack just because there was some inconsistency between what my pack looks like and some of the reference photos that I've been using and just some things I wasn't exactly happy with and maybe some measurements that didn't quite come out exactly as I expected. So before I get into the new stuff for today, let me show you some of the things that I've updated since the last video. In a previous video, I added this blob of glue to the resistor on the side of the ion arm, but when I went back and compared it to the reference photos, wasn't completely happy with it because it came out very clear and I wanted more of a yellow kind of amber look to it to match the screen use prop. So I took off the clear one and I bought some different glue sticks that had a little more tinge to them and did the same process, mashed it on there and Kind of hard to see on camera from this angle but it does have a little bit more of that darker weathered look to it without me having to color or paint it so i'm happier with the results on this one in another video i added three rivets to the back side of the power cell on the motherboard but again when i compared it to the screen use pack i felt that my rivets the heads or the flanges were a little too big compared to the screen use pack so instead of the 3 sixteenths or 4.8 millimeter rivets that I originally had on there, I replaced them with 5 30 seconds or 4.0 millimeter. I do feel that's more accurate to what we see on the real screen use pack. In last week's video, I added the Atlas frame to the motherboard on the Proton pack. But as I was making some of these other changes, I noticed that the frame right here was almost touching the proton pack and even the foam at the top was pretty much all the way up against the motherboard which it shouldn't be and so I decided to take this one inch spacer out of the middle over here and replace it with a one and a half inch spacer and I ended up having to change the bolt from two inches to two and a half inches to make it all the way through and that made a big difference it still has a little bit of kind of a taper toward the motherboard as you go up but it is better than it was when it was touching the motherboard or almost touching the motherboard if i do make any other changes to that it'll be to change the length of the ones on the bottom to maybe balance out the crookedness of that Another change I made had to do with the placement of the blue brick battery inside my proton pack. What I used to do before was pull out the ribbon cable, reach my finger in the hole, turn around the corner, and turn the battery on and off, and then have to thread the cable back in there. Got tired of doing that. I've been looking for a way to get around it without having to drill a hole somewhere else, to maybe like in the motherboard or something that would kind of again take away from accuracy to be able to access that i'm not into rewiring batteries so that it just basically goes through the xlr plate switch which i'll talk about here in a moment um, but i did think hey i just drilled another hole in my pack a few weeks ago here on the side right there and so I ended up using that hole to be my access point to my battery, which I'll show you as I take the shell off. So you can see here I have my battery pack. I have it attached to this piece of foam that came out of my travel case that I used for my Proton pack. I had some extra and I thought that might be about the right size for a spacer to get that to fit where this on off switch would be in the right spot to line up with that hole and so i have it all velcroed to the motherboard right there and that switch right there lines up perfectly with that hole and 
basically all I need at this point is something small enough to fit through the hole that can reach in and push that button instead of sticking my finger in and pulling out the ribbon cable every single time. So as long as I have like a pencil nearby, a pen or a screwdriver or a toothpick, something where I can reach inside, I can turn the battery on and off without having to change anything that's going on on the front of my pack. I do have it all wired up and ready to go now. So the battery, the speaker, all the lights, everything are back the way they were before I took it apart. Didn't feel like that would be something you guys would want to watch in a video. So that's something I just did on my own. Now that I've got all those updates out of the way, we can get to today's changes. On the motherboard, I'm gonna change a couple of things. I'm going to swap out the foam that is against the motherboard right here. This is kind of more of a shape that goes with a Spengler type pack. The one on the Venkman pack is very odd shaped and I uh, bought some foam from gbfans.com and shaped it up. I'll show you here what it looked like when I first bought it. And then I kind of made a template using some reference photos and measurements. And I don't know that I got it exactly right, but this is the basic shape that I was kind of going for that is at least closer to the Vinkman pack than what I have on there now. Another change I'm going to make on the motherboard is to swap out the XLR plate that I did have on there with one that's angled a little bit differently to match the plate that's actually on the Vinkman. These were both created by Nathan Stevick and I found him on the message boards on gbfans.com. And he built the first one that I bought. This was a deluxe one because it came with all of the things that go inside of it, a wiring harness so it would line up with my battery, everything that I needed for it. And then with me only needing to change out the plate, that's all I bought this time. So I'm gonna hang on to the Spengler one and then swap it out with the Vinkman variety. Again, first thing I'm going to take this motherboard foam that I got from GB Fans. First, I have to take off the one that is on there. And I've kind of messed with it recently, so it should peel off pretty easily. And the one that I've got comes with its own adhesive backing. So it should just pop right in place without me having to glue it on. I might have to clean up the motherboard if some of the foam doesn't peel off from this original one. But it seems to be coming off pretty well. Now it tore right there. So I won't be using that one again. GB Fan sells these for about 10 bucks. They come in a pretty big box so they don't get folded in the mail. And then you just cut them to the size or the shape based on the pack that you are building or whatever your heart's desire might be. It might be a tiny bit small height wise for the Vinkman, but if it is, it's just barely. So let me get on this side. See how much I have left over here. Funny story. I thought I hit the record button and I didn't. So let me just show you what I did instead of showing you how I did it. Had to use a little bit of goo remover to get the extra adhesive off of the old foam that was up there. And then I would just basically just use this part right here again as my guideline to place it right there and then outward from either side. The Vinkman of all of them has the most peculiar shape of it. It's kind of hard to see here being all black. Maybe you can see if I show, shine some light on it. It's very curved along the bottom. 
and then the edges are kind of at angles. So again, I made my own template, tried to line it up the best I could with the piece of foam I had, and then cut it the best I could. Some of it's a little bit rugged or uh, not exactly perfect, but we know for sure that the one on the pack isn't exactly perfect either. So works for me. And let's go ahead and move on to the next part. The next part is swapping out the two XLR plates. So getting rid of the Spengler, putting on the Bankman. This is the bottom of the motherboard right here. I have two holes already drilled because I already had the Spengler on there. And then the wire harness goes through and then the XLR plate attaches to the Alice frame side. So first I need to remove the actual XLR fitting from the Spangler version. And that just comes off with this big nut and washer. This is basically a dummy connector. I don't use it. They evidently had use for them on the original packs. That's how they would charge them or power them up or whatever. That's not the way that mine works. So I do have an on-off switch that I connect through there. I have a charging port through there. And then I also have a ex extension for my soundboard where I can pipe in music from my phone through a jack that comes out into one of these holes that's on the plate. And it'll be a little challenging to see parts of this because it does have a frame in the way. But you can see where the wire harness comes out, on off switch, this is my I think this is the one where yes the charging port and this is where I can hook up my phone and play whatever song I want into the soundboard so the one I took off this one this is the new one that's going on I'm attaching it with a couple of small bolts and a couple of wing nuts. It's a little awkward. Everything did line up as far as the little bolts go. I'm just adding the second wing nut on there now. And that'll hold the board in place. Nice and tight. Alright, first one I'm going to add is the big one over here. You can see that better. There you can see I have that one in place. The next hole is bigger and so the next biggest one is actually this one that is my charging plug. So first I'll take the nut off of it. Feed that through the second hole. I'll go back down and tighten these later. The next one is where I'm going to put my on off switch, my toggle switch. And I do have these wrapped pretty good in electric tape on this side of the pack 
just because I don't want them to get I don't want the wires to get all frayed up rubbing on that hole that goes into the motherboard. So switch nut and then the last one is this audio extension jack. I'll put that in the end. So there we go. Everything installed on the new plate. Okay, I thought I would wrap it up by showing you how everything works when everything is hooked up. I don't have the shell on there, so obviously I don't have the cyclotron lights and the power cell lights, but I can show you how the power all works together. So I have the battery right here, and it would have the hole to access it on the side of the EDA there on the shell. So you turn on that battery. The next point would be down here on the XLR plate. You flip the switch, and then that allows all of the lights and sounds to work on the pack. One thing that I found out the hard way is that I cannot leave the battery on and just turn this toggle switch off and then expect to be able to leave that for as long as I want. That doesn't work. That will drain the battery because there's a red LED on the battery that will drain the battery itself if you just leave it on. So in short spurts, yeah, I can do that. I can leave this on maybe for part of a day and then just turn this on and off when I need to to access easier on the side of the pack. But long term, you do have to turn the battery off at that point, to not drain the battery. Other things on the pack, like I said, it does have a few other ports. I have an extension here for the audio jack. So I can plug this in, in right here, and then this into my phone or whatever device I want to play music from or audio from, and that will pipe it straight into the soundboard. I can also charge my battery externally by plugging this one in right there to the second one and plugging it in. So it's handy to have all that access there on the exterior of the pack where you don't have to open it up to charge the battery or try to plug something in to listen to music. It's all right there on the exterior at the base of your pack, kind of hidden away where nobody sees it. And the XLR plate to boot is a accurate part of the real packs. So that's all of that. A lot of words, sorry. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little more concise from here on. The last three that I did had to be long because there were a lot of work that went into those, but I'm going to try to stay between 10 and 20 minutes on these videos going forward. I do appreciate you guys sticking around and watching these and being so receptive to them and giving me nice messages and everything. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your nice messages and please keep watching subscribe if you haven't go back and watch some of the ones that you've missed and you can see the playlist there on youtube to catch up on any that you have not watched i appreciate you guys and i'll see you in the next video